All right, everyone, it's not very often that I actually cover a lot of stuff the same day that it breaks, unless it breaks like really, really early in the morning or like overnight. Uh, this is an exception because this is an exceptionally, <laughs> exceptionally important thing. Uh, Donald Trump tweets out his basic rough guideline uh, of his gun proposals related to uh, trying to stop shootings. And he's got several things there that he's working towards. Now, this is in the wake of his very malleable comments the other day, and then Sarah Huckabee Sanders came out and said, well, you know, everything's still in the process, and, you know, we can work around this. We'll talk about it for a while. Today, he put forth something that appears to be, unless this is like a more A-B testing, and I don't think in this particular scenario it is, it seems like it's definitive what he wants to work towards. Some people are saying that this is actually an attack on the Dems to force them to vote for a piece of legislation that he's primordially pushing. Uh, that's possible, although I don't think it's particularly likely. Here we get the never Trumpers on board with the Democrats, which I'm sure he'd find amusing. But now his basic proposal is fourfold. The first proposal is arm the teachers. Now this is something that we've heard before. We've heard it for decades uh, from the Republican Party. I don't really support the idea because the idea is that while some teachers maybe they don't want to, uh, I don't think they should be forced to have a gun. Number two, would they actually be that effective as opposed to, you know, security personnel, something along those lines? Not necessarily. Third, a lot of the problems with violence in school, really, uh, in inner city areas, uh, you could think could cause a shooting uh, in such a case. You could have a case where some student gets violent in a more topical manner as a student, the students are fighting or something and some teacher whips out a gun. Not sure that that's the greatest way to solve things. I think there are other defensive methods. Now, uh, less than lethal force, uh, you know, rubber bullets or something. Okay, yeah, you could make a, a case for that or certainly pepper spray and tasers. We get a problem where on college campuses, they're like, you can't even have pepper spray. So they're not going to trust um, people on academic in academic settings uh, with even the most topical of weapons, and yet they're talking about, oh, yeah, give the teacher like a Glock or something. I'm not, uh, it's not unconstitutional. It's just probably not the most pragmatic solution. Uh, I think it would be better to simply fire the shittiest teachers so the students are getting a better education and their concerns heard if they're being bullied. I think that would probably prevent more shootings than arming the teachers, but that's just me. The second proposal is blatantly unconstitutional. Trump is, is out of his gourd if he's actually going to push this. The concept of banning anyone under the age of 21 from owning a gun. I am sorry, but the Constitution is fairly straightforward on this. If a person has achieved the age of majority, the age in which they can vote, which happens to be 18, they can go off and die, they can do basically whatever they want other than drink, which in, in and of itself is a problem uh, and should be rescinded. If you then attempt to say, but you can't have like, you know, your Second Amendment right fully, like you'd have to be given a gun by your parent or something. You can't go and buy a gun because you're not 21. That is blatantly in violation of the Constitution. If a person is old enough to vote, they're old enough to exercise the other rights, um, you know, Constitution permitting. Of course, you have to be a certain age to run for office in certain scenarios. Otherwise, though, you can do as you want. Um, would you say that it would be acceptable for the government to institute a litmus test based on age for the exercising of the First Amendment? Like, yeah, you're old enough to vote, but you can't speak freely. You can't have your political blog till you're 21. No, you'd see it as ludicrous. You'd say it's a crazy idea. Well, then why not for the Second Amendment? It's the same exact legal ramifications. It's absolutely unlawful. The third is just dumb, and that's trying to ban bump stocks, which he spoke of the other day. Won't stop any shootings, won't stop any deaths. Bump stocks uh, are used in almost no mass shootings at all because they're not necessary for a mass shooting. <laughs> Neither, by the way, is an assault rifle. It's just not actually necessary. And the fourth is probably the worst, the most insidious uh, thing that he's suggesting. This is also, by the way, uh, blatantly unconstitutional. And that's the idea of converting the right to own a firearm into a privilege further on the arbitrary classification of mental illness. The idea that background checks will be expanded specifically with an eye to mental illness. So if a person is like, you know, they've, they've got mental problems, they wouldn't be able to purchase a gun. Under what arbitrary scheme is this actually going to be accomplished? Well, they talked to their therapist. They said, you know, they were kind of suicidal once five years ago. Well, they can't own a gun. They can't buy a gun. Well, that's unconstitutional. They're not, they're not a violent individual. They've committed no crime. 
the person has committed no crime. That's that's the differentiation between preventing felons from owning guns, which, by the way, I would even temper that. If it's a nonviolent felony, who cares? And if it was a long time ago, I'm not sure that I care either. If they killed someone, yeah, okay, okay, it makes sense. But like, oh yeah, I assaulted someone 20 years ago, I can't own a gun. Eh, I don't know, it's a little bit odd. But talking about somebody who has not actually done anything wrong, you are simply speculating that statistically they may be more likely to. Well, by that same token, you can say, okay, people of certain races and genders, you know, men are responsible for most violent crimes, so we're going to prevent them from owning guns. The background check will be your chromosomes. Now, that you couldn't do that. It would be unconstitutional. For the same reason, there's a big difference between someone who has topical depression and someone who's psychotic. But even if the person is psychotic, if they have committed no actual crime, there is no ability for the government to convert that right that they have into a privilege. Have they actually, if the person is supposedly a violent, irrational individual, you'd think there'd probably be a crime there that they've committed that you could look at on a normal background check, right? And if not, they're obviously not a violent individual. Even if they have violent urges, well, they could be in control of them. They can say, yeah, I have anger problems. What about someone who's been in anger management? They're just an angry person. Not even on the mental illness level, but they're just like, you know, I get so mad sometimes and my boss pisses me off, my coworker pisses me off. And they talk to a therapist about, it. is that going to be on a background check? Again, is race going to be part of the background check system? Is, is gender? Males, statistically speaking, most of the time when there's a shooting death, a male has committed it. Specifically within certain age rankings uh, as well. Most of them tend to be in their 20s and 30s. It peaks around, I believe, the mid to late 20s, if I remember correctly. Are you going to ban people? Are you going to say, well, you've got a hiatus on when you can own a gun in that period of time. You can, you can only own like a, a very, very manual weapon, like an old black powder musket or something. You know, when you get a little older, then you can have your revolver. And then, you know, you hit 40, now you can have an assault rifle. It wouldn't work. By the way, isn't it very strange that Trump would suggest this? He's, he's basically saying if you're 18 years old in the country, according to, I guess, his morality, you can go overseas and use a machine gun or a tank, but if you, like, come back and you're 19, like, you're like, yeah, I retired from the military, I joined when I was 18, now I'm 20, and, you know, I'm, I'm home on leave and I can't even touch a gun. You know, I can, I can train to literally, as a job description, blow things up and kill people in other countries. That's okay. I can drive the tank, press the button, fire the missile, operate the drone, I can carry around the M16, I can do whatever I want, wear all sorts of combat armor, I can do all sorts of great things. I can be a sniper and blow people's heads off a mile away. But when I come home magically, I don't have that right anymore because I'm a civilian, so I can't even be trusted with, with a man. He's talking about banning the sale of all weapons, too. He's not even talking about just, oh, well, you know, uh, assault rifles, so-called, will be under this. 18 to 21, you, you can't purchase them. He's talking about so essentially person's 19 20 years old they've been hunting with their dad like for fucking a whole decade or something but they can't actually purchase even the most topical they can't even buy a 22 something that's basically useful for hey i can kill a squirrel or a rabbit with this that's crazy talk this isn't going to stop a single crime none of these proposals would have had an effect on parkland none of these proposals will have an effect on any shooting they won't do anything and it's also unconstitutional, so I totally stand against it. I think it's a crazy idea. I think if you want to stop shootings in this country, there are a few very straightforward ways to do it. End the drug war so that you don't have that level of cartel slash inner city gang crime. That's the bulk of it, you do realize. That and suicide are the two big things. And that brings us to the second idea, mental health, not background checks, but simply Spend more time, give people therapy. Increase the budget for therapy and rehab and all of these other things other than doping people up with pills. Because right now the answer to every other disorder under the sun seems to be, hey, here's a bottle of pills, come back in a few months. And then somebody goes completely apeshit and kills a bunch of people because they've, they've come to rely on the pills to make them feel normal. So they have an off day, they feel st totally despondent, they off themselves, there's a gun crime, they blew their head off. They off somebody else, they're just so angry at the world, they go and kill a bunch of people. They're being bullied in school. Third proposal, get rid of these teachers unions that shield shitty teachers that don't care about the students. You, get, you solve that problem, you probably reduce the school shootings by 50% or more. Because it seems that all these students have one of two things happening. They've either, they're on antipsychotics, but they're not being treated properly, or they're being bullied, sometimes both. Think of Columbine, of course, bullied individuals. It's not an, an exoneration of their actions, of course. But at the very least, you can understand that is a, it's a contributing factor. 
It's a problem. It's something we need to address as a society. Things aren't as cut and dry as, hey, shooting people bad. Gun shoot people. Therefore, gun bad. We must ban gun. That's a caveman explanation. That's, it's too simplistic. It doesn't make sense. It's wrong. It's not going to do anything. Trying to say that a person, well, uh, you were treated for uh, paranoia 20 years ago. You can't have a gun. It's been brought up. This was a good point. I can't remember where I saw it. What about postpartum depression? Seasonal affective disorder? Are you going to disarm the whole northern climate of its guns every winter because people feel under the weather? It's a recognized disorder. Are you, what this is going to do, actually, I'll tell you what it'll do. It will incentivize people not to seek help for mental problems. Because they're like, well, I want to own a gun, but you know, I don't want to go. I feel depressed, but I don't want to go talk to the therapist. Isn't this exactly, by the way, what the Republicans and even Trump chastised in the idea of, of uh, you know, when, when Obama was talking about health care. And he's talking about, well, maybe kids should uh, uh, be compelled to tell their schools or the hospitals. Basically, tell on your parents if there are guns in the home uh, for health-related purposes. Wouldn't that be uh, akin to what you're accomplishing here? Basically, oh yeah, you can't own a gun because you felt depressed once. You can't own a gun because you get angry. You can't, uh, you know, this is ripe for abuse too. What about people in blue states who will construe, well, they'll make up their own definition of what mentally ill means and they'll include, hey, has, ra has like, you know, mildly bigoted beliefs or something. Look forward to confiscation. Look forward to disarmament. The NRA should come out against this. Don't know if they have yet. Republicans in Congress should refuse to vote for it. You can temper it. You can have increased mental health spending. Absolutely. Pair it with educational reform. You know, make sure the teachers actually give a damn about the students. Maybe spend more on education. Get the, get the schools in line so they're not shitholes. Try to stop bullying. Look, and, and by bullying, I don't mean, hey, someone said something unkind to you, politically incorrect online. No, I mean systemic harassment. It happens in schools. It happens elsewhere. We need to stop it as a society. But we're too busy right now focusing on a bunch of bullshit issues. Oh, it's the gun's fault. Oh, it's, it's the problem of this person has out their beliefs in a YouTube page. That's not causing crime. You can blame that for a million years. That's not causing crime. Lack of freedom and lack of human respect and dignity in the most basic sense is really the problem. Some of these teachers, they don't care about their students. Medical health, uh, the mental health system doesn't care about the patients there. A lot of these people, they just prescribe a lot of pharmaceuticals because they're incentivized. They get paid to do so. They're paid by the pharma companies. Of course, they're going to prescribe them. They're not going to say, hey, I want to actually talk to you twice a week to try to deal with your problems. No, therapy, that's no longer in vogue. Here's some pills. They'll make you feel better. Don't talk to me again for a month because I don't give a fuck about you. You're just a patient. This is a purely professional situation. I don't care about you as a human being. They, I think we've isolated the problem of why people go crazy, but no, of course, it's not uh, fashionable to say that. It's fashionable to just blame the gun. The gun is the response. Uh, the gun manufacturers... The NRA is responsible for non-law-abiding citizens who do terrible things. That's crazy talk. It's never been true. It'll never be true. Hell, the NRA is showing a restraint right now. They're coming out in favor of universal background checks. You know what? I don't even, I don't even support that idea. I don't support the concept of the government uh, administering background checks on private sales. No, absolutely not. Because the hope is that private sales... You don't need a background check because the person's aware of the other person's character. And if that person is law-abiding, as you hope generally they are, no problem, really. And by the way, what about stolen guns? Oh, you know, there's a little bit of a problem. Your gun turned up in a robbery. Oh, well, it was stolen a while ago. Oh, prove it. You know, maybe you committed a crime, too. You sold the gun to some crip gang member. So. That's about all. Peace out.